Hey, everybody. I'm Cece. And the most interesting thing that I learned this year was that if you give me a good enough story that has enough interesting parts, I can be motivated to do things that I used to absolutely loathe. For example, running. So ever since I was a little girl, I just I hated running for two reasons. First, sweating is gross. Um, and second, I get really bored, right? So when I tried running as a little kid, I would spend the entire run thinking about how miserable I was that I had decided to run. Doesn't work out very well. Um, now, as I got older, I tried again and again because, you know, I've heard about the runner's high. It's so great and the exercise is great. And then eventually I came with, you know, the conclusion that I need to assure myself this will never work. Um, but about a month ago, I started playing a game. It's very aptly named Zombies Run, uh, which is kind of cool, right? Uh, the game itself is just an iPhone game, um, and I don't think that this slide is going to advance anymore. But uh, essentially what happens is now I run about uh, three to four times a week and two miles a day, right? So that's kind of crazy, and I, I don't know that I quite grasp that this is happening. But the way it works is through sort of a motivational story. All they really do is they take together audio files and they mix it in with your own music. And suddenly, when you push play, you become the main character in a zombie apocalypse story. OK? Now, um, to give you guys sort of the full experience, I've decided that I'm going to reenact the beginning of episode two for you. Now, I first have to catch you up with what happened in episode one. So imagine you're on a helicopter, and you're flying to this town to give them supplies, when all of a sudden, somebody shoots a rocket launcher at you, and your helicopter goes down, right? So you parachute out, you get on the ground, you know there are zombies around here, and you book it. Now, someone is talking to you on your headset. You don't know who. He claims he's from the town, um, but he doesn't know if you're alive or dead, so he's just talking. And that's when the episode starts. So this is really where I invite you to sort of close your eyes, if you wish, and listen, pretend like you're running, and my voice is in your headphones. Wow, there's someone alive down there. Hey, hey, can you, can you hear me? No answer. Still, look at him go. <sighs> Headed for that tower, just like I said. OK, running person. If you can hear me, you're doing really great. The main pack is behind you, and you're going to come out of this forest really soon. But there's a, well, I can't think of a better phrase than small army of zombies coming to get you. Um, I don't do very well under massive pressure. Uh, but that's OK. You're going to be OK. If you just head towards that large building to your left, everything will be OK. Hey, look at, look at that. They're changing directions. Oh, oh my God, they can, you, you can hear me. OK, OK, great. It's cool. We're going to get you safe. We're going to bring you in. And no, we are not going to ask them that question because they might be injured. All of the more reason to ask them that question. Listen, my name is Dr. Abel, and I'm the medic here, the only medic at Abel Township. Your path is going to take you almost to the old hospital, and we know there are medic kits there from the first wave of infection. If you could pick up just one or two, that would help us. But it's too dangerous. You know what happened to Runner 5. All of the zombies are headed towards the site of the crash. But what about whoever fired that rocket launcher? Listen, if someone is going to kill that runner, taking an unusual route will make it harder, not easier. I don't want to be hard-headed. But everyone in this township earns their keep. You should be able to see the hospital by now. If you get there and you can't find anything, we might not be able to let you in when you get here. So that's the beginning of episode two. Um, it's pretty great. The game sort of takes you through some twists and turns that are plot, like not plot devices, but they're very interesting because the danger is never the same. It's not always zombies running after you. What's happening sometimes is let's say, hey, I have a running partner now. She doesn't believe me. She doesn't believe that I got off that helicopter and that I sort of you know, killed somebody, took their clothes, and then came to this town. That's dangerous. Um, or you know, you're running through the woods. You hear a child crying. You know the zombies are going to get them. You want to get to that kid first. So what's really cool and what really sticks with me about this game is how much my survival instinct really just like kicks in, even though all of my other sensory perceptions are telling me otherwise. So let me just paint this picture for you. Sometimes I like to run at night in a gym on a treadmill, right? And uh, you know, I get there, I push play, I'm on a treadmill. I know for a fact there are no zombies in this gym. Now, I see the TV screen in front of me. It is always a cooking show that I always cannot figure out how to turn off. It's night, so the windows sort of reflect me back to me, so I see myself running on a treadmill, right? I have my gym shorts, my headphones, my iPhone in my hand, because that's how I do it. And uh, all of a sudden, you get to that point in the story in which 
there's some groaning and some moaning and it gets louder and the danger is totally there. And even though my very logical mind is telling me there's no way there's any zombies in this gym, I feel that urge to run faster because I have to, and I do, and I do it over and over again. Thank you.